There are only four, so that's good. If I ask you what you thought they would be, what do you mean they would be? Fundamental, what does the word fundamental mean to begin with? Basic. Basic. People like to put fun in quotations, but usually that's never a good indication of, it's usually the opposite, right? It means it's not going to be fun. Fundamental means basic, which means that every other course that is What's the opposite of basic? Complex. Would you say that the other forces are derived or come from these fundamental forces? Yes. Probably, right? Okay, so think of an everyday force that Gravity. you know about. Gravity. Do you think that's fundamental? Okay, any others? Friction? Do you think that's fundamental? Maybe? Any others that sort of come to mind? Sort of the those are sort of the two everyday ones. I hate to tell you this, but only one of them is fundamental. When scientists say fundamental, they usually mean really complex and really only are fundamental to scientists, unfortunately. Let's have a look. What do you know? Gravity is the first one. It's an attractive force. You do what you want. At the end of the day, you need to identify the four fundamental forces. At the very least, you should write down what the four are, I would say. Right? If you want to write, it, it's up to you how much of the description you want. But at the very end, you have to know what the four fundamental forces are. And I will tell you this, that gravity is the first one. It's quite attractive. I'm attracted to gravity, are you? No. Huh. Well done. Are you are you are you just being funny or is that true? It's true. Now, to be honest, is gravity attractive to man? Gravity is a force. Can a force be attracted to something? Like we are attracted to the earth because of gravity. Is the earth attracted to that because of gravity? Remember Newton's laws. What's that one say about every? So if matter is attracted to the Earth, then the Earth must be mutually attracted to matter. The only difference being is that's not very big. Certainly not as big as the Earth, right? Yes, he certainly is. Sure, he's a huge part of a lot of things, but he's not near as big as the Earth, right? Yeah. Is now, are you attracted to this uh, remote control? No. Look at it. It's got buttons. It's got a spot for batteries. No. You're wrong, man. You are attracted to this. This isn't very big, but he's attracted to it. I'm also attracted to it. So is Cole. So is Peter. It's also attracted. This is attracted to Peter. See? How come the like, if, if we threw Peter off the roof of the gym, he would be attracted to the ground and fall to his death. Oh, maybe not. He may be just by the slightly made, I don't know. But, um, anyways, he would be attracted to the earth. How come the remote control doesn't go flying out of my hand towards Peter's head? Because it is attractive. He's not that big. My brawny arm is able to withstand that force, and I'm able to hold it back. Yeah, but it's still left over to the chopper. Ah, exactly. If I let go, I'm not going to go off the bus, but if I let go of this, Earth's gravitational pull would be much greater than Peter's gravitational pull. Right. It exists between all objects, as I've outlined. You can write this down. I don't care. I mean, if you don't know that, I'll write it. The gravitational force between the center of the Earth and objects near it causes objects to fall toward the surface of the Earth. If you drop tennis balls or remote controls or speeders off gym roofs, they fall to the ground. It's a force. Force of gravity, right? We will spend probably about two weeks talking about gravity in about three weeks from now, in a month or so. Okay? Gravitational fields. Everything is attracted to the Earth. Even Australians. 
nothing against Australians. I lived there for a year. But if you're an Australian, you have no internet. If you're a really tall Australian, Australian standing at the bottom of the earth, you're still attracted to it, right? Does that seem like a weird, like if you stop and think about it, how can they, like, how can they don't fall off? Gravity pulls them towards the center. They don't think of themselves as being upside down. They think of us as being upside down. Everything's attracted towards the center of the earth. I think you get that, right? How much of that do you need to write down? If you get the word gravity down, you're good. Okay, here's the second one. Don't write any of this down. Just listen for a minute. I'll give you a chance, okay? Don't write it down. Put your pens down. Electromagnetic force. What's holding Peter together? I'm going to pick on Peter today. What's holding Peter together? What's, first of all, what's, made, what's Peter made up of? Atoms and molecules and stuff like that, right? Okay, so there has to be something holding Peter together, right? Like if I grab his arm and yank, I'm not that big, I probably can't pull his arm off because he's being held together by electromagnetic force. It holds matter together. By providing the force that binds atoms into molecules. He's like, what's the, like 78% water? Is that what you're, something like that? I don't know. I'm not a scientist. Well, maybe I am. Anyway, 78% water, it, hydrogen and oxygen molecules stuck together by the electromagnetic force. It's the force between particles of opposite charge. It's quite attractive too. Positive and negative protons and electrons, you know this from grade 9, attract to each other, right? And the force between particles of the same charge is repulsive. Ooh. Right? Peter's positive protons don't like each other. Write down what you need to. Don't spend a lot of time on worrying about this. Okay, so now, have you ever thought about run, zipping around the outside or all those electrons and in the middle of, like, say, uh, I don't know, a fluorine atom, fluorine's number nine, it's got nine protons, nine protons, all positively charged. I thought they didn't like each other. Positives don't like other positives. Since like charges repel each other, how can positively charged protons exist closely packed in an atomic nucleus? Don't write that question down. The answer is, there's such thing called a strong nuclear force. Write that thing down. Strong nuclear force is, a, is the third fundamental force. It holds protons and neutrons together in atomic nuclei. If you watch enough episodes of Big Bang Theory, Sheldon will likely use the word strong nuclear force at some point. It's the strongest force. Oh, that seems important. But it acts only over very short distances inside a nucleus. We're talking like, well, tiny, right? How big is an atom? Centimeter plus. <laughs> it would be pretty big. Yeah, we would be. Yeah. Actually, I think I have a video on how small an atom is. I should have showed it. I should have showed it. Yeah. Should, uh, why didn't I show it out, Chris? Okay. Yeah. So strong nuclear force is the strongest one. If I pull Peter's arm off, I'm breaking electromagnetic forces, but the, his protons are still nice and packed together, right? I just happen to have some in my hand, and the rest are past your butt. Yes, exactly. Peter, you okay with all this, right? <laughs> nuclear force? Oh, yeah. Plus, there's like nuclear accidents. That's not, that doesn't sound cool. That's another country, maybe. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Strong nuclear force. The weak nuclear force. See, I told you you wouldn't have heard of it. It's responsible for some kinds of radioactive decay, blah, blah. The decay that he creates radon gas. Do you guys know about radon gas? You have it all in your basement. It's your favorite gas? Causes lung cancer. It's the number two cause of lung cancer in Canada. It's not a good thought. No, it's not a good thing. We all have it in our basements. I tested mine a while ago. It's extremely high. The way to get rid of it, uh, what it does, it, it, it's created, it's, it's a radioactive kind of thing. Um, and it comes from the uranium in the ground. There's a strong uranium content in, in Manitoba's soil. And it comes through your basement, through cracks in your foundation and stuff. 
Um, so the way to get rid of it is to create the pressure difference between your house and below your house has to be equalized. So they put in like a venting system that vents it outside, kind of disperses it. Did you get that? I haven't got it yet. No, I have to get it back. Are you going to get it on okay. Uh, they say that if you're a smoker and you have radon gas in your home, it's like pretty much the kids are dead. Yeah. So, um, actually, yeah, I checked the radon in my living room, not in my basement. It was actually higher in the living room, which was a little out of town. I thought, well, I'll just stay out of the basement for a while. Open the windows. Wow. It's actually worse in the wintertime because your home is sealed up. <laughs> Sleep with the window open. <coughs> yeah, get your radon tested. It's a long acting. It's like you're like one night in a basement with radon gas is not going to kill you. It's it's prolonged exposure. You, you should probably get it checked. Yeah. Um, so it's the next to the weakest force. Notice that it's not the weakest one. It's next to weakest. Acts only when particles are close together. Really, all you got to know is the name. Okay? That's all you got to know. The radon gas thing, that's just something that you should know, but I'm not going to test you out, right? Yeah. Ah, excellent question. I always wait for someone to ask that. We know that the strongest... Which one was the strongest? Strong nuclear. And the next to weakest is... Oh, my spelling, my handwriting is atrocious. The weak nuclear is there. So what are the other two? Gravity and electromagnetic. Where do they fit? Gravity is the weakest. Peter, why do you say that? Allow me to demonstrate. Is gravity pulling the paper down? Yes. See? But... Does gravity pull the bottom of the paper down, or does the electromagnetic forces in the paper hold it together? Exactly. So gravity is not strong enough to overcome electromagnetic forces. Therefore, is that what you're thinking? Gravity is the weakest. Yes. That's your question, all? Good question. Okay, there you go. We've identified the four fundamental forces. Know their names. That's all you need to know. Have a good day. Again, as always, write down only what you think you need to. Here's our friend Newton. He's got 80s hair. He'd be like the rock star of the 16th century. Newton's laws. Yeah. Is that story true? Do you really think Newton was like... No. Probably not, yeah. Which was sitting in an apple, underneath an apple tree one day, and an apple fell on his head. That's how the story goes, right? Um, what likely happened was that he was probably walking through a, a, an orchard, saw an apple fall. What he started to wonder was, I wonder if the force that caused that apple to fall is the same force. Because he noticed, you know how you can see the moon during the daytime? And it appears to fall. He wondered, I wonder if that's the same force. And is it? No. Yeah, it's pulling a thing. It's pulling a thing. Is gravity, is Earth's gravity pulling the moon to the Earth? Is that what you're saying? Should we all, should we be alarmed? That sounds scary. Isn't it? Is the Earth pulling the moon? Well, it's keeping it in our in orbit because of our gravity. It is pulling it to the Earth. We should all be terrified. Uh, no, I think it's, I think it's... I think they said like a centimeter. Oh, is that right? All right. But the key is that the moon is already moving, and so it... What does Newton's law say? Object in motion? Stays in motion. Now, does an object in motion stay in circular motion? Sorry, I wasn't there. Does an object in motion stay in circular motion? That how it works? No, an object in motion stays in straight line motion. We'll show off your good hands and catch this ball for me. Did it travel in a straight line path? It did not. It did what? Curve. How come? 
trajectory as a gravity. Now, if I can throw it hard enough, Even right? Yeah, I know. But I couldn't. If I could throw it hard enough, it could maybe do what? Go like around the corner of the Earth, kind of like around the curvature, right? And eventually, it might come right back. You've seen the cartoon, you know, where Bugs Bunny or someone, or maybe the Roadrunner, I don't know, throws the ball and ends up coming right back and in the head. Yeah. Okay. That's the idea. If you can throw it hard enough. Okay. But more on that in a few weeks. Okay. So, what is a force? Force as a physical quantity can affect the motion of an object, right? It's a vector quantity. Why is it a vector? Because it's got magnitude and direction. Oh yeah, right? Remember the super evil criminal vector committing crimes with both size and magnitude. So yes, any force needs a direction. Just like a teenager, a force needs a direction in life. It's a vector quantity. So you need to apply a direction. Sometimes those are shown by positive and negative. That's all. Okay, so Isaac Newton was the first person to clearly describe the relationship between force, mass, and motion. You don't need to know that. That's the fact that right? Newton's laws of motion apply not only on Earth, but they are true throughout the universe. They are, in fact, universal. In Interstellar, when Matthew McConaughey, I think, right? Am I right? Goes to the other world. Is he applying Newton's laws out there? Yeah. Universal, right? When he pushes that guy over the edge there, because the guy's been living on that planet for what, like 10 years or so by himself, and he's going a little crazy? Spoiler alert, sorry about that. Yeah. Interstellar. Who was there? Was it you? Yeah. You sitting behind me? Yeah. Bill comes out of the movie, he's just like, oh. I could see that his head hurt, that's how mind blowing he was. <laughs> it was pretty good, yeah. Okay. These are, when I said fundamental forces, you were likely thinking these things. Right? You don't necessarily need to write that list down. But just be aware, these are the kind of forces we're going to be talking about for the next couple weeks. Buoyant force. I don't think so. Look at it. Yeah. When you go... Swimming, maybe, you know, and you're floating, maybe the first thing you do in swimming lessons, and you put lifeguards in here, and you teach kids how to float, you're using the buoyant force. Is there a buoyant force here in the air, in the room? Yeah, because it says fluids. Air is a fluid, too. Elastic force produced by stretching, compressing, or twisting an object. When I fire the tennis ball down, it compresses and bounces back up at me. Okay, that's an elastic force. Electrical force produced by the interaction between charged particles. Frictional force was one that someone thought was a fundamental. It's produced when one surface moves over another. It's actually based on gravity, because they're so close together. Gravitational force is a fundamental, produced by the attraction of any two objects. Acts downward on Earth. Magnetic force produced by interaction of at least one magnet and another object. All of those are based on those four fundamental forces. And there's lots more as well. Those are sort of the main ones. The only ones you're really going to be really concerned about might be, well, certainly this one. That one's going to be, those two are there are going to be useful a lot. Just everyday common ones. Okay. Newton's first law of motion. Now, when elementary school and junior high science teachers explain Newton's law, they sort of trim it a bit. They simplify it. I'm simplifying it for you. As you go on, you'll learn Newton's law is sort of in a little more in-depth kind of. Here's today's version. If there is no force acting on a body, it will continue in its state of rest or continue in moving along the straight line path of uniform speed. Blah, 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 blah. What's the old version of that? An object in motion will stay in motion. It's known as the law of inertia. I'll pause there. Most of you don't believe this, by the way. I'm going to prove that over the next couple weeks. My goal is to get more of you to believe it. Most of you can say it. If I say Dylan and an object in motion, you will, Dylan will say, exactly well done. If I say an object at rest, you will say, it stays at rest. People get that. They, they, they memorized it. 
but they don't truly believe it or they don't truly understand <coughs> what it says. And that's because it goes against everything that we see in everyday life. When I slid the book across the table, it stopped. Why? Because everyone always forgets about this part. If there's no force acting on a body, there was a force acting on my binder, the force of friction. And because friction is everywhere, objects tend to not stay in motion. Objects always slow down because of that pesky friction. I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that meddling friction. I wonder what happens when I click here. Tablecloth trick. Is this object moving? Yes or no? Those are your only two options. Does that imply, Nick, that there should be another option? These are my junior high glasses. I can always count. It's, it's amazing. Every time I put them on, I say that. There's always someone that goes, really? <laughs> It's so so much fun. Oh, one person left. Who is it? It's yes or no, man. Yeah. It's yes or no, man. Yeah. Most people said no. <laughs> Nick is sort of on the right lines here because there's another option. You're not going to like this, but I set you up. Because the correct answer is, it depends. That's what you said. Who said that? He did. That's why I needed more information. If you said that to yourself, congratulations, you understand Newton's laws. Because, what did Newton's laws say? If there's no force acting on a body, it will continue in a state of rest. It will stay at rest or will keep moving, right? If there's no force acting on a body, is there a force acting on this body? Well, yes, there is. But what, what, the, what the law really should say is if there is no net force. If the net force on the object is zero, there could be a gazillion forces as long as they all add up to zero, then the object will continue in a state of rest, like the objects in the tablecloth trick, or continue moving along the straight line with uniform speed. So the answer to this question is not yes or no, it's maybe. So yes. everyone is right. No, I, and I set you up and it's so that we can get into this conversation. I'm not expecting you to get it right there because the right answer wasn't even provided for you. But I will ask you that question over and over and over and over, disguised, not always exactly the same way, until you show me that you get it. Because it does depend. Was it moving before? Because if it was moving before, it will continue moving. But if it was at rest before, it will stay at rest. So if it was moving before, it will continue moving. No, then it stays put. Well, oh, let's not get into that. I call this the teenager law because teenagers like to keep on doing what they're doing, right? If they're sleeping, they like to keep on sleeping. If they're out there driving around in the car, they don't like to come home, they like to keep on driving around in the car. Newton's second law of motion isn't near as much fun. It's lousy. This is the one, the F equals MA one. And what it really says in English, in words, is the effect of an applied force has caused the body to accelerate in the direction of the force. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. The acceleration is in direct proportion to the force and in inverse proportion to the mass of the body. It's just law. law. It's the F equals MA one. It's the one that teachers like to give you problems on and you solve them. You take mass and time acceleration. I'll let you write it down and I'll explain. Okay, if you throw something in space, does it keep going until it hits yeah. something? Yeah. Uh, it keeps going in a straight line until it encounters a gravitational field. Because just like a ball that I threw you, right, it curved. Yeah, well, let's think about the comets that come back every 86 years, right? They are 
they're still on that gravitational field. So it's not a straight line path. You, for it to be a completely straight line path with constant velocity, you'd have to be literally in the middle of interstellar space when there is nothing. And like I mean like for gazillions of kilometers. Because there's always going to be some sort of gravity, right? Stars are huge, right? I mean, Pluto is orbiting the sun. How far away is Pluto from the sun? Like, mind-blowing distance. Kind of still in that gravitational field. Yeah, that are still orbiting the sun. So, yeah. Does anyone know what this funny looking symbol here means? You've probably seen it in math, maybe. No, that's, that's not infinity. Infinity is the closed one. It's a good guess, though. It means proportional to. The acceleration is direct proportion to the force and an inverse proportion to the mass of the body. Math teachers love to talk about that. No one really understands what they're talking about, right? What does proportion mean? It means sort of like related, right? Direct proportion, right? Your lifestyle is proportional to your income. If you make a lot of money, you spend a lot of money and you have a lavish lifestyle. If you don't make a lot of money, you don't, well, generally people don't spend a lot of money, right? Um, the acceleration is direct proportional force. In other words, if I apply a really big force, the acceleration will be really big and it will accelerate really fast. If I apply a little teeny tiny force, no acceleration at all. But the acceleration is in inverse proportion to the mass. In other words, if it's a really big object, the acceleration is really small. Inverse proportion. No, it keeps going in a, in a constant motion, right? Once there's no more force, no more acceleration. Really good question. Yes, when, when, a, when a rocket ship goes, there's only acceleration when it's firing. Once it's done firing, what does it do? Fine. Keeps on moving, right? That's how they get. Otherwise, like, if I'm driving from here to Winnipeg, am I burning gas the whole way? How come? I thought objects in motion stay in motion. Yeah. Unless there's an outside force, in this case, friction, right? There's a little bit of rolling friction. There's friction between the wheels and the axles. There's friction between the wheel and the road. There's a lot of air resistance, right? Okay, so you need, now, in, in space, once you fire that rocket, you keep going forever at the same speed. You don't need that gas to keep going. Really good point. In other words, I explained this already. In other words, the more force, the more acceleration, less acceleration, same amount, no relationship whatsoever. Kind of like my junior high years. Well, I guess. Look at the glasses you were wearing, right? More force, more acceleration, less acceleration, same amount, or well. I think we can all agree it's not that one, right? Please don't answer these. A, B, or C, Peter? Mustafa, A, B, or C, man. Quick, quick, quick. i got to get through it. Hey. Well, you don't have a clicker. A. Bigger the force, the bigger the acceleration. That's what direct proportion means. Someone answer D. Okay, try again, my friends. The more mass, the more the acceleration, the less the acceleration, the same amount, or they, I'll give you a hint, it's not D. Correct answer? B. The more mass, the less acceleration. Big objects are hard to move. Think about Lucas on the line, right? He's a big guy. He's strong. He's hard to move. 
You're not going to put, uh, I don't know, one of those little great nines on playing center. Nate. Yeah, Nate. I can make fun of Nate. You're not going to put Nate on the line. He's easy to move. Put him outside where he's quick. Okay, so in addition to those things, you sort of got to know if a force applied to a body at rest, the body will begin to move. Yeah, big surprise there, right? If I pushed on my binder, it moves. Ooh. Call the herald. If the body is moving in a straight line and the force applied in the direction of motion, the body will accelerate. If, I, if, if it's moving already and I push it more, if I step on the gas, it accelerates. Also, newsflash. If the force applied in the direction is not in line with the motion, the acceleration will be in the direction of the force. Oh, let's do this. Catch again, Will. If the force applied in a direction not in line with the motion, what was the direction of the motion? Up towards the ceiling over there, right? But it didn't. It curved. Which way was the force? Down. Down. Due to? Gravity, the acceleration will be in the direction of the force. So when I throw the ball, the force of gravity is down, but what's also down? The acceleration. The acceleration is in the same direction as the force. That's what I'm trying to say. The acceleration is in the same direction as the force. If I push something sideways, it accelerates in the same direction as the force. And what if it's already moving? Like, what if Cole comes running at me? Cole comes running at me and I push him, do I slow him down? It's not like I'd probably get right over because he's got big mass and I'm small. Right? But if I was equally massive as Cole, right, and if I applied force, I would slow him down. Be the opposite. Okay, I think I've got time to do the last one. Let's go quick. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, anyways, we'll do this one. If we were looking at a proportional statement, we find we get the equation. You guys have seen F equals MA, right? You've used it in grade 9, I know, or grade 10, no, grade 10. Right? I'll stop after this, I promise. We'll do the third lot tomorrow. Uh, the unit of force is the Newton. Remember, one of the outcomes was defining the unit of force as the Newton. We just did that. The unit of force is the Newton. Named after Newton. Also, the cookie's named after Newton. You know that? The new, the big Newton cookies named after him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Mass is in kilograms. Yeah. Acceleration is in meters per second squared. Combining the units for mass and acceleration. So mass is kilograms. Acceleration is meters per second squared. <coughs> because kilogram meters per second squared is hard and tedious to say, they named the one. Kilogram meter per second squared, it's defined as one new named after our country. Well done. And I'm going to leave you today with one party question. If I were to have a unit named after me, what would it measure? Whole wheat. Is that what you said? Great. Language. If there was a unit named after me, what would it measure? What's the, what, what happens when I click here? Oh yeah, you can do a poll. Cool. I wonder if it's still on. Oh. I don't, I don't know what any of this stuff means. We will get the things. Over a year ago, you remember paper I sent by <laughs> I tell you, you, you let you let students put something on the screen, and they just no. I know. I don't even yeah. <laughs> Very disappointing.